Okay, sports fans, here we go. We are going to go ahead and um, do another one. So another inlay. This one's more of an onlay on tooth number 20. Uh, let's find myself real quick. Add a case. Tooth number 20, not a crown. It's an inlay. Biogeneric individual. We're going to use Empress. Tooth number 20. Next. Okay. So it would be worthwhile to take the opposing arch just so you can see the occlusion, the contacts. So we're going to go ahead and do that. A lot of times with inlays, I only take the uh, um, arch we're working on and adjust it like a composite. So you notice I basically prepped off the entire lingual cusp. Everything internally is nice and rounded. I don't have a whole lot of separation between the uh, adjacent teeth. And that may pose a problem when we're doing the margin. Um, I did not prep this in the typodont. That's probably why. So let's get some upper images. Hmm, it's got an extraction site that may need to be restored with an implant. And then a buccal scan. Oops. And now a buccal scan. Hi, how you doing? Can you see me? That's really blinding me. All right, oh, can't see anymore. So let's get it to think. Um, I found in the past, and you'll probably notice this when you do it more and more, the more images you take, the slower the machine goes. So get what you need, but don't get more than what you need. Um, so the machine will take a few minutes to calculate. It's thinking about the meaning of the universe. Um, doing a little bit of calculating here. Next step is uh, the computer going ahead and bringing the models together, the upper and the lower, based on the buckle scan. So you'll see that next step here in just a second. Here we go. Okay, so it's going to correlate the models. And now we've got an upper and a lower. We're going to set the axis. Okay, so start with the left, get that positioned right. Remember the right, the right button of the three buttons below the mouse ball. The right button is the pan. The left button rotates. So there's the right button, there's the left button. Same thing here, pan and rotate. Left is rotate, right is pan. Once we get these settled, the occlusal uh, line basically running along these lines, then you can move it to where it needs to be in the arch. Again, pan and rotate. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this just a little so it's a little more upright. And notice when I rotated that one, now I've gotta straighten this one out again. So anterior teeth up here, bicuspids here, molars there, roughly. That's okay for my placement. I'm not really concerned too much about that being precisely where it needs to be, but that'll, that'll do the job. Um, let's take a look at this prep. You'll notice internally everything's rounded. We've done our best to stay away from the pulp, although that could be fairly close in some areas. You can see the computer wants 150 microns of space between the actual objects when it's imaging, otherwise it's difficult for it to tell the difference. So um, we'll have to margin it carefully there. You can see my margin runs super gingerly just a little bit there and comes up and around. So when I double click to start the margin, you'll notice that it's in automatic over here in automatic mode. <laughs> My kids are sending me their orders for Chipotle. Um, so we click periodically. Double click to end. Now I'm gonna go in and edit. Double click to start. Double click to end. Double click to start. Stay on the tooth. Double click to end. Looks good. I'm happy with that margin. All right, so we're going to define the insertion axis. This is, of course, your draw path. We'd have a hard time getting undercut unless we put the uh, draw path in the wrong area. So here is the draw path that I'm comfortable with. 
Now we'll get a design. So if you were to have selected crown, you'll get a little crown that pops up off the margin area. So there's a pretty nice proposal for an onlay. Now we define an onlay as any indirect restoration, indirect restoration, indirect is the key, that involves a cusp tip, but not all of the cusp tips. Once it involves all of the cusp tips of any particular tooth, it becomes a crown by definition. So, then onlay involves at least one, but not all, of the cusp tips of a tooth. So there's a pretty good proposal. Um, let's take a look at the opposing arch. Boop, turn that on down here. Go over here. Uh, not much to worry about with that tooth being missing. Sorry, I would have put a tooth in there if I'd have realized that. <laughs> turn that back off. Let's check our contact points. I'm going to add just a little bit. I like to see a little bit of yellow, but not too much. And um, if you put too much yellow in there, it could create some issues with uh, having to over adjust. But look at the internal line angles of that uh, prep. See how smooth and rounded everything is? You don't want anything angular, nothing sharp. Um, you know, plastic teeth are tough to prep, I understand. Um, but internally, you want everything nice and smooth. A well-defined margin. It doesn't have to be textbook perfect, but it needs to be well-defined and rounded internally. Let's get a proposal, see what that's going to look like. There's our proposal. I'm going to move the sprue so that it is on the buckle. And it would also be a good idea for me to check these thin spots. Let's go back and, and alter those thin spots. I had turned off the minimal thickness. All right, so I'm going to use my favorite tool, the circular shape tool. We're going to elevate this just a little bit. And then if I need to, once it's bonded, I'll go ahead and uh, trim that down. Now, if I get too close to the uh, mesial or distal proximal area, those adjustments could actually alter the contact as well. So you always want to double check if you've gone back, see if we've altered the contact points. Nope, we're good. So let's go back and get a look at our preview. There it is. So it's going to mill out of a, we have it set as a 12 millimeter empress block. Uh, this is a lucite porcelain, very pretty, very polishable. They really glow. And just for fun, let's turn on what the lower looks like. I'm going to turn off the block so you can see how that fits in there. And let's go ahead and make this a little translucent so you can see how the pieces come together. So what would the indication be for this particular setup? You know, if a patient came in and had sheared part of their tooth off, um, if they had some failing composite restoration that had left a really razor thin edge on the lingual, then something like this would be great. Very conservative, um, technique sensitive, a challenge to get done, but you could definitely do it and it would save all of this tooth structure. I mean, that's half the tooth. So sometimes we have to cross that bridge with a crown or we have to cut all that tooth structure off. but possible, yeah, let's definitely save it. So there you have it. Onlay, D-O-B-L, sorry, D-O-L, Onlay on tooth number 20.